If you haven't heard, EC Council has released a new version of their CEH exam, the Certified Ethical Hacker. It is updated to version 11. I'm Daniel Lowry, and this is a critical update. Here I am on the EC Council's website for their CEH exam to learn a little bit more about what's going on with the new version, see if there's any uh, glaring differences between the last version and this one, just to get you good folks out there ready to go and uh, maybe whet your appetite for it. Let's scroll down a little bit through their page. Of course, there's some good marketing jargon, but uh, here we have some highlights of what sets CEH apart from the rest. I'm, I'm assuming other certifications in this sphere. So it's mapped to the NICE framework, a 2.0 version, they say it has a better interface. Well, that's always a nice thing, right? Merging attack vectors. Great, that means it's staying up to date with modern exploit technologies. Hands-on hacking challenges. That's always a good thing there. Modern case studies and current events. Enhanced focus on malware analysis. I'm assuming that is going to be a, a more a robust area than they did with the previous version to call that out like that. They now have a live cyber range. No more simulations. That's kind of cool. I like having that kind of stuff. Greater focus on cloud and IoT, again, pushing us to let us know this is where we're starting to um, build up the areas that we had in V10, but now we're giving a stronger emphasis to in V11. And of course, thousands of hacking techniques, tricks, and tools. Well, that's, that's, a, big, that's a big bite right there, thousands. So awesome. Let's uh, also look down here. Introducing the Break the Code Challenge with CEH V11. To beat a hacker, you need to think like a hacker. So 24 incredible hacking challenges across four levels of complexity. So we can see here there, Break the Code is basically a, uh, a few hands-on challenges to help shore up and solidify the techniques and tools and tactics that they're teaching you inside of the courseware. So you've got network, traffic and logs, blind SQL, uh, iDoor, arbitrary file upload and download, reflected XSS, so a lot of great stuff. These are all very tried and true hacking technologies and techniques that you would need to know about uh, to be a successful ethical hacker penetration tester. So good on them for adding this break the code functionality. Looks pretty cool. Of course, they got their pricing and details. Well, let's see here. One thing I did notice down here that's really important is let's talk about the exam itself. Uh, there is 125 questions. You got four hours to fill those out to a successful completion. Uh, it is a multiple choice formats. Testing delivery is ECC exam and uh, view. If you need the pre exam prefix, they are there. I do like that they called this out about the passing score. The passing score apparently varies a little bit, just depending on the test bank that you get. They, they vary their test questions. So uh, it'll be determined, your passing score that is, by the tests questions that you actually get on that exam. Now let's talk about the course outline. I think that's an important function as well. It looks like the last course outline, honestly. It, I didn't see any differences glaring, but we did see up above that there was a little more emphasis on certain areas like cloud and malware analysis. So down a little bit further, we I did see also that there was the, let's see if it's in here. Yes, the blueprint for CEH access our exam for uh, our exam blueprint for CEH. A little typo there on their website. Uh, if you hit that download now. You can just go straight to it. I'm gonna bump this for us, and it kind of breaks down what you're gonna go through. So this is probably a better place to look for differences between V10 versus V11. If you're looking for that more fine, hmm. Yes, where are we going to spend a little bit more time? A lot of great stuff in here. Network and communication technologies. How, how many number of questions you're going to see for, and also some of the weightage. So how, how important is this section to the exam itself? So it's going to help you out a lot as you prepare to take that exam as you move on. One of the questions I typically would get on something like this, and you're probably asking yourself, if I've already started studying for V10, should I abandon that and go to V11? That's a difficult question to answer. It's all gonna depend on your certain circumstances. If you're really far along in the V10, uh, it would be tough to tell you to abandon that and, and jump over to V11. But it also didn't seem like there was a whole lot of difference between V10 and V11. So maybe, uh, I say difference in the, uh, the way that it's teaching, just more emphasis in V11. So if you've already spent the money on V10, you're probably still pretty okay. And especially if you're already there. Um, but if you've just now started thinking about, man, maybe I should take that CEH exam. 
which version should I go with? Obviously, V11 is going to be where you want to do want, want to go. So there you go. Check that stuff out. That should help you out if you're thinking about CEH. Now you know that V11 is out, and if you haven't pulled the trigger on that uh, examination uh, voucher yet, the V11 would be the way you want to go. Check out the playlist for more critical updates and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.